into this house, gathered in his name to worship the Lord. How many of you came to lift up Jesus this morning? God is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
like the congregational invocation together. Sustaining God, grant us this day the blessing of your faithfulness and your grace. Where there is hunger, give us bread. Where there is thirst, give us cool water to drink. Where there is loneliness, give us friendship. We give our transgressions and our errant ways as we forgive those who transgress against us. Where we have wronged another, guide us in reconciliation. And where we have been wrong, guide us on a journey of forgiveness. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
and toss him in jail just because he was lifting up the name of Jesus. And people were listening, and they didn't like that. So they were in jail, while in jail, being beaten and in pain, all in silence, praying and sang praises to God. This, a lot of us are in prison, whether they be prisons of sorrow, loneliness, finances, uh, health, our pain. But if we just, in our midnight hours, sing praises to God, just sing praises, just sing praises. Release those chains that bind us, just like he did when Paul and Simon.
looking to bless. There's none better.
this is indeed the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We're always blessed to celebrate our visitors and newcomers who are worshiping with us. You are certainly important to our fellowship. So if you're visiting with us or you're here for the first time or haven't been in a while, let me ask you to stand right now if you are visiting with us. Amen. I'm happy to see brother and sister Howard. Amen. We're certainly blessed to see them. If there are any other guests, if not, let me ask you to stand all over the sanctuary. Let's greet brother and sister Howard. Let them know how happy we are to have them worshiping with us today. There's somebody you haven't spoken to. Go ahead and greet them and let them know that you're glad to see them in Jesus' name. Amen. experience. Those who are celebrating birthdays in the month of August, we want to recognize you. So if you're celebrating a birthday in the month of August, let me ask you to stand. Amen. If you are celebrating, my, my, my. We want you to remain standing so we can take a good look at you. Brother Kyle, amen. You got you. Happy birthday. just to note your bulletin announcements. If you are planning to retire, and I was just talking to a couple of people already this morning who are retired this year. So if you are planning to retire, or already retired, please note the Flipper Temple announcement uh, that we want your name submitted to our church office. The information is listed in your bulletin. Please note our clothing pantry. We are still in need of men and women clothing. The information is listed for your convenience. Turner Seminary on next Sunday afternoon. 
at 6 o'clock p.m. We'll be celebrating the 6040 celebration of Dr. John Frank Green, the President Dean of Turner Seminary. This event will be held at St. Paul AME Church, 1540 Prior World. All proceeds will benefit Turner Theological Seminary. I'm blessed to chair this celebration on behalf of the Board of Trustees. Bishop Reginald Jackson will be the preacher for this service. So if you are able to come and be a blessing to Turner Seminary, we'll certainly look forward to your being present on next Sunday afternoon at 6 o'clock p.m. Our YP Gears will give out school supplies today downstairs in the fellowship hall immediately after this worship experience. It is very, very important that our people register to vote. Uh, in 2019 in November, there will be municipal elections, but I'm telling you, in 2020 in November, that's a very, very important election for our people, and we want to be registered 100% uh, those who are members of Flipper Temple AME Church. Also, we are planning a wonderful outreach to our colleges, so the Space for Grace College Ministry is planning our move-in. We want to welcome new students to the Atlanta University Center with radical hospitality offered by Flipper Temple. We want volunteers for Morehouse College move-in date, which is Tuesday, August the 13th, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Spelman College move-in date on Wednesday, August the 14th, from 7 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. And Clark Atlanta University's move-in date on August the 15th, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. If you would like to be a part of this wonderful, wonderful, or radical hospitality opportunity, please check and call our church office and leave that information with Brother Andrew Pink. Again, please note all of the bulletin announcements at our Space for Grace uh, ministry will meet after this worship experience in the small chapel as we plan for these events. Again, we're glad to have you in worship and uh, at this time, our wonderful Unity Choir will come and minister once again. Let the church say amen.
say a word. Amen. Come on, Sister Alice. Uh, give her a hand. Amen. We are approaching our Women's Day celebration, and we certainly don't want to miss this important announcement. Sure. 
children that they experience so we let's help them as much as we can to experience so many I'm sorry to sorry to see here but um, if we do that they'll leave and know that okay I can do whatever else I undertake at this church or where it is because I have the spirit for them so thank you for understanding that now um <coughs> As part of our fundraising efforts, we will be uh, doing dinners the first Sunday in September. And we ask if you would please go downstairs and get free orders today if you can. So you'll be taking free orders every Sunday until the Sunday before the first Sunday. Because it's important because we need to know how much to the person and we don't want to do too much waste that money. So please do that for us. Uh, <clears throat> patrons and ads. Someone will be downstairs taking patrons and ads. Full page, $100. $50 for half page. $5 per name for patrons.
also verses 9 and 10. I'll be reading from the New King James translation of the Bible. We find these words. Now it came to pass as Jesus was praying in a certain place that when Jesus ceased, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And Jesus said to them, when you pray, say our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Then in verses 9 and 10, the Lord says, so I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And everyone who seeks, finds. And everyone who knocks, it will be open." Shall we pray? Gracious Lord, we come before your presence. Praying first of all for those who have experienced tragedy this week. We pray for those in El Paso, Texas, those in Ohio, and in other places. Lord, we pray for their comfort and their peace. Now, Lord, speak, for your servants are listening. Consecrate us now to your service by the power of grace divine. Let our souls look up with a steadfast hope and our wills be lost in thine. Have your way, and we promise to give you glory, praise, and honor. In the glorious, matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen. Let me just also lift verse 13, which says, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? I want to use for a subject this morning the power of prayer. The power of prayer. Prayer is one of the great laws of natural religion. In every religious tradition, prayer makes 
the difference. For those of us in the Christian faith, we believe that if you're strong in prayer, you're strong in living. And if you're weak in prayer, then you are weak in living. We strongly believe that if you pray right, you can live right. So brothers and sisters, in our text today, we find that prayer is not just a pouring out of emotions, but prayer can also be a learned experience. For we need to know how to pray. We need to know what to pray for, and we need to know who to pray to. So let me say that again. We need to know how to pray. We need to know what to pray, and we need to know who is the object of our prayers. Some years ago, I was introduced to a book by Dr. Ben Johnson, who, who was the uh, peach tree professor of evangelism at Columbia Theological Seminary. He wrote a book entitled An Adventure in Prayer. And that book, Dr. Johnson stated that when we pray to God, we ought to first of all adore God. Think of his greatness and the goodness that he has done toward us. Then he goes on to say we ought to thank God. You know, before we ask God for anything, we ought to thank God for everything. Then he goes on to say that we ought to ask God for guidance. You know, we, ask to, we ought to ask God to lead us and direct us every day, every week, month, and year. We ought to pray for God's guidance. And then we ought to dedicate ourselves to God by thanking God for the vows we have made in our lives. Our dedication ought to be as a Christian. Our dedication ought to be as a spouse. Our dedication ought to be as a parent, as an employee. Or as an employer, we ought to thank God for all the vows we have made as a believer. Then he goes on to say that we ought to intercede on behalf of those who are in need. Then he goes on to say only then are we to make petition to God. Ask God for what we need. And when we ask God for what we need, then we ought to trust God. So the real issue is, if you're praying, why worry? And if you're going to worry, why pray? So brothers and sisters, praying and worrying should not be in the same sentence. If you pray, give it to God. If you worry, then you're wasting time in prayer. Then he goes on to say, wait for the consummation of your prayers. Now we ought to understand that sometimes... God answers our prayers by saying yes. Sometimes God answers our prayers by saying wait. And then sometimes God answers our prayers by saying no. I'm reminded of the story of a lady who was madly in love with a gentleman. And she prayed every day that the Lord would bless that brother to be her husband. And, and they broke up, but she still prayed. She went to her pastor, she went to her family, and she prayed that this man would be her husband. So eventually, the brother married somebody else. And the pastor tells the story that five years later, he saw the same lady. She was married to another man and had a beautiful young child in her hands. And when her husband departed, the pastor asked the lady, well, what about the other guy you were dating? She said, well, he has been divorced three times. So sometimes when God says no, it's for our good. Y'all help me preach and look at somebody and say, sometimes a no is for our good. So brothers and sisters, the real question today is, as we look at our text, is how can we find power in our prayer? Let me say it again. How can we find power in our prayers. Well, I'm just going to leave you three things from this text. First of all, we get power in our prayers, prayers rather, when we have a place of prayer. Now look at somebody and say, we need a place of prayer. Tell them one more time, we need a place of prayer. 
Now look with me at verse 1. It's right here in the Word. The Bible says, Now it came to pass as Jesus was praying. Now I think the important point here is that Jesus prayed. Before every major event, Jesus prayed. When he chose his disciples, he prayed. Before he was baptized, he prayed. While he was on the cross, he prayed. Now watch this. If Jesus is the Son of God and the Son of Man, and if he is connected as one with the Father, and he prayed, how much more should we pray? So Jesus gives the example. He says we need a place of prayer. But first of all, it's important to note that Jesus engaged in the important business of prayer. And then notice in verse 1 that the word says he was praying in a certain place. Let me ask you this question. Do you have a place of prayer? Do you have a place that is set aside? That's a quiet place so that you can commune with God. That may not be one place for, for some people they pray in their bedroom. I ain't mad with you. Some folks pray in the bathroom. Some folks pray in the kitchen. Some folks pray in the living room. Some folks have an altar set aside for their prayer. But wherever it is, there ought to be a place where we can go to God in prayer. You know what God called his sanctuary in the Bible? God called the sanctuary where folks are gathered a house of prayer. You know, you remember when the money changers came into the temple and Jesus said to them, you have, you have turned the house of prayer into, the, into a den of thieves. Are y'all with me now? This place where we worship ought to be a place of prayer. Ought to be a place where we can go to God and tell God our deepest need. Right. So every time you come to Flipper Temple, it ought to be the house of prayer. There ought to be a place of prayer in your home. And if you are so busy, you don't have time to pray on your home. You can in your home, you can even pray while you're driving the streets of Atlanta. Right. Just don't close your eyes. The word says, watch and pray. So as you watch and pray, and sometimes if you are in situations on your job and you have a cantankerous boss, you need to be able to pray. Prayer is not always audible. You don't have to audibly pray. You can pray from within. Amen. But there ought to be a place of prayer if you want God's power to be resonant through the business of prayer. Look at somebody and say a place of prayer. Then secondly, if we want power in our prayer, we must have a pattern for prayer. Let me say it again. We must have a pattern for prayer. Look at the last part of verse 1. The word here says that uh, when Jesus was praying and praying in a certain place, when he ceased from praying, one of his disciples asked him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. It's important for us to know that the great rabbis of those days had prayers for their disciples. And this prayer was given by Jesus for his original disciples, but also it is a prayer for his latter day disciples. Every one of us who are born again filled with the Holy Spirit, we are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he gives us a pattern for prayer. First of all, we are to acknowledge God. And notice there here in verse 2 that Jesus said, when you pray. Notice he didn't say if you pray. But he said, when you pray, say our Father in heaven. Now listen to me now. This is intimate. It is like praying to a parent. Acknowledge God as an intimate parent who cares about you. And you know what? I'm gonna I, I, I'm gonna expand your knowledge of God. If you had a bad experience with your father, and if your father brings negative connotations, God can handle a mother God experience. 
Something that blew over somebody's head. But God can even handle a mother God experience. Because God is that which nothing greater can be conceived. And if God is Father, then God can also be a loving parent. So when we pray, we acknowledge God. And then, watch this, we reverence God's name. Hollywood be your name. God's last name is not Dan. We reverence God's name. Did y'all hear me? We don't misuse God's name. We don't abuse God's name. But God's name is to be what? Reverence. That's the prayer pattern. And then we pray for God's kingdom, God's reign, God's rule in our lives and in our world. We pray for God's kingdom to come. We need God's kingdom at the White House. We need it in the Senate and in the House. We need it in the State House and the State House of Representatives. We need it in every city in which we live. And you know what? God's rule ought to be in our church. It ought to be in our home. We pray for God's kingdom to come. Over in Revelation 11 and 15, the word says that the kingdoms of this world will one day become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ. And our prayer is that he will reign forever and ever. We pray for God's kingdom. Then we pray for God's will. God has a perfect will for our lives. God also has a permissive will for our lives. When we decide to go outside of God's perfect will, we will not receive God's best, but when we are saved and in God's purpose, then God will connect us to God's permissive will. But either way, we pray for God's will to be done in our lives on earth as it is in heaven. And then we ask God to give us our daily bread. Didn't say for tomorrow or next week or next month or next year, but we ask God to give us day by day what we need. And then we ask God to forgive our sin. You know, where I grew up, the old officers of the church would pray, and they would pray that God would forgive us of our sins in thought, word, conversation, and deed. Sometimes we sin by what we think about. Amen. Sometimes we sin by doing wrong. Sometimes we sin by talking wrong. And talking wrong is not always cursing. If you don't have faith, then you're not operating. You're sinning. You know what Hebrews 11 and 6 says? Y'all stay with me now. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith it's impossible to please God. Do you have faith to believe that God can meet your every need according to God's riches and glory? So the word says that we ought to ask God to forgive us of our sins and to forgive everyone who sins against us. And then the word goes on to say we ought to ask God to lead us not into temptation. You ought to pray that God will not place you in a place where you will be tempted. And then he goes on to say that we ought to pray that God will deliver us from the evil one. Yeah. Don't you know the devil can get in your house? Yeah. Yes, sir. The devil can get in your spouse, your children. Yeah. The devil can get even in your church, yeah. on your job. Yeah. Are y'all with me today? Yeah. So we ought to pray that the Lord will deliver us from the evil one. Yeah. The devil can even get to the White House. Do y'all believe it? No, no. The devil can be in the city and not. Y'all know y'all, 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 the devil can be at city hall. And the devil can be at your living room. So we ask the Lord to deliver us from. So that's the prayer pattern. We acknowledge God, we reverence God's name, we adore God. And then we petition God to give us, to lead us, to deliver us, and to forgive us. That's the prayer pattern that the Lord gives us. And then finally, 
Finally, we need a place of prayer. We need a pattern for prayer. Watch this now. And then we need to be persistent in prayer. Let me say that one more time so you can have it. You need a place of prayer. You need a pattern for your prayer life. And then you need persistence in prayer. You know, sometimes we are in situations where we can paddicate with God in our prayer life. But I'm here to tell you this morning that if the case is serious enough, then you'll be persistent in your prayer. Now, if you get a diagnosis of cancer, you can't pray. You can't play in your prayer life. You lose your job and you got a mortgage and bills. You can't pray. You can't play. Are y'all with me? In your prayer life, if you're going through a nasty divorce, you can't play. In your prayer life. So Jesus says here. He gives a parable. He says, "Which of you would have a friend? A friend." We just saw what a friend we have in Jesus. Which of you would have a friend and you go to him at midnight and you say to him, you need three loaves of bread because a friend of yours have come to town and you have no food to set before him. But Jesus goes on to say that in the parable, the friend said, ma'am, leave us alone. It's after midnight. I'm in the bed. My children are in the bed. We don't have time to get up. But watch this. The man continues in persistence. Stays at the door. Knocking. And the man gets up and gives him bread. Not because he wants to. Not because he has to. But because of shameless persistence. There comes a time in our lives when we have to pray with no shame. There comes a time in our lives when we got to get before God and lay before God in prayer. And ask God to change our situation. There comes a time in our lives when it don't matter what people say about us. They may say, you come to the altar every Sunday, you crying at the altar, you're pleading with God. Well, don't you worry about what other folks say because they can't heal you. They can't deliver you. They can't forgive you. And they can't save you. Many of us miss our blessings because we don't have that shameless persistence. Some of us don't seek God like we ought to because we're looking around like somebody else looking. Well, the next time they're able to save you, they're able to deliver you, they're able to heal you, they're able to, they're able to bring you out, then you worry about them. But you know what the Lord says? The Lord says you got to ask. Ask for what you want. Then he says sometimes you got to go to another level and seek for what you need. And then there comes a time that you got to knock so that the door will be open. You know, sometimes God puts us in a situation where we got to ask God for the blessing. We got to seek God for the breakthrough. And God wants to see if we want it bad enough that we will knock on the door so that we can get the blessing. You know what Jesus said? He said, everyone who asks will receive. Everyone who seeks will find. For everyone who knocks, the door will be open. So all we got to do is get in the will of God. Polish up our prayer life and ask God. Seek and knock and the word declares that the door will be open. And then you know what Jesus says in the prayer? He says, which of you have a child? And the child asks you for bread and you'll give him stone. Or which of you have a child who asks for fish and you will give him a snake? Which of you would have a child and he asks for an egg and you will give him a scorpion? Do you know what Jesus says? 
Jesus knows that sometimes even parents can be evil. Sometimes parents can be deceptive. Sometimes parents can have ulterior motives even for helping their children. So Jesus goes on to say, you being evil, if you know how to do good gifts to your children and give your children what they need, listen to what he says. He says, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Let me stop by saying this. The greatest gift we can get in prayer, according to verse 13, is the Holy Spirit. So if you're saved, if you're in right relationship with God, if you're saved, you know that when you die, eternity in God will be yours. If you're saved and you know your sins are forgiven, if you're saved and you know that the slate is wiped clean, then you have the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is God in Christ who lives in you. And it's the Holy Spirit that gives you power in prayer. So when you have the Holy Spirit, you can ask and receive. You can seek and find. You can knock. And the door will be open. I'm going to ask you just to bow your head where you are now. While every head is bowed and every eye closed, I want you to think about the goodness of God. How God is to be adored. And I want you to think also about God being reverence. His name is holy. His name is to be lifted above all names. For in his name every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Just think of God's name as being holy. I want you to think about God's guidance for your life. Ask God to guide you this week. Ask God to guide you this month and this year. And what I want you to do right now is to think of two persons who you need to intercede on their behalf. They may be sick, they may be going through, or they may just need God's guidance for their lives. I want you to picture those two persons. And right now, I want you to picture them in the transforming presence of God. See them here. If they need employment, see them with vital employment. If they need a blessing in relationship, see that relationship mended. If they need a financial blessing, see them in that place right now. Picture them in the transforming presence of God. And then just release it to God. Say, God, I thank you for answered prayer. And I dare you to wait this week for the consummation of that prayer. Because the Lord is a prayer answering God. God who loves us. God who saves us. A God who forgives us. And a God who prospers us. And while every head is bowed and every eye closed, and there's no one looking around, every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're here today and you're not in a relationship with Jesus Christ, then it's a perfect time to give your life to Christ. The beauty of it is, is we don't have to qualify for salvation. All we have to do is admit that we have fallen short of God's glory and we have sinned. That's the only qualification. The word says we've all sinned and come short of God's glory. We all in the same place. So if you're here today and you're not in relationship with the Lord, this first invitation is for you. And we'll pray with you and you can be certain of your salvation. Then secondly, if you're in this sanctuary today and you're looking for a church home in Atlanta, and you know that God is pointing you to flip the temple. I want you to know that I'll be glad to be your pastor. And those of us who worship and serve in this place will be blessed to show you radical hospitality and have you as a part of our church fellowship. So if you want to be a part of the Flipper family, 
This invitation is also for you. I'm going to ask you just to lift your hands and stand to your feet. Our stewards and stewardesses are going to come and join me. And, and I'm going to ask you to stand. If you don't feel like walking, just raise your hand. I'll come and, I'll come and walk with you. Doors of the church are open. You can come. Just come down even of these aisles. Doors of the church are open, and we invite you to come as the choir sings. Doors of the church are open for salvation and church membership.
two sisters, and his AC was out yesterday, so I'm happy. Amen. Now, teachers, administrators, amen. Faculty members, we got everybody. All right. Now I want to do something else. If you are a parent or grandparent of one of these children, I want you to come up. Come on. Now we need parental involvement. Parental involvement makes a difference. Makes a tremendous difference. I want you to find your child or your grandchild. Amen. Your child and your grandchild. Now those of us in the congregation, I, I see many retired teachers in the congregation, so y'all know what they need. So let us extend our hand toward this. Just extend your hand this way and let us pray. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, we pray for our students in pre-K, in elementary school, middle school, high school, and college. God, we pray right now for your blessings upon them. Dear God, we declare excellence for every one of them, that they will reach their full potential. And we just thank you right now for freeing them to be excellent students. We pray right now for their parents and grandparents. Empower them to be an excellent support system. Help them not to be discouraged, but to be an encourager and a blesser for their children and grandchildren. God, we thank you for their commitment to their children. And Lord, we pray for our teachers and administrators. We pray right now that you will give them a vision that every child can learn and will learn and must learn. We just declare that there will be no bullying. We declare that social media will not hinder the development of our children but be a stepping stone, stone to provide enhanced learning. Lord, again, bless those in the classroom, bless those in support staff, bless assistant principals, principals, those in the central office, provide blessings. And God, we pray that no weapon formed against any of these will prosper. We bind violence in the name of Jesus. And we just declare a great year, an awesome year, and a tremendous school year in Jesus' name. Amen. Now go ahead and give that child a hug.
and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room to receive. I want you just to stand on your feet and just lift your tithes and offerings before the Lord and do what we believe God for God's blessing. Just lift them before the Lord. Lord, right now, we receive your blessing for every giver and every believer. And we just thank you for meeting their needs. For you said for them, you will open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that there will not be room to receive. So bless their homes, bless their workplaces, bless their businesses, investments, retirement. God bless right now in the name of Jesus. And as you do, we promise we give you glory and praise as you bless your kingdom and as you bless the work of your church. In Jesus' name, amen. The ushers are coming right now as you remain standing. You can also give through our giving kiosk, which is at the north side of the church. You can also give through our PayPal at flippertempleame.com through our other online mediums. You are welcome to give. The center basket is for our tithes and offerings. The outer trays are for our mission offerings. The center basket, tithes and offerings, outer trays, mission offerings. You may come, you may be.
presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, a gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Father, who 
who of your tender mercy did give your only son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and that instituted his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you, and grant that we receiving these your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, his death and suffering, we may be made partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, thank you, Lord, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take ye, for this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, the Lord took the cup, and when he had given thanks, thank you, Lord, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. As often as you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given to preserve our souls and bodies to everlasting life, that I take and eat in remembrance of the Lord who blessed us and kept us. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, shed to preserve our souls and bodies to everlasting life, I drink it in remembrance of his precious blood that was shed for us, and I'm thankful. Thank you, Uncle. Confession to Almighty God. Be the kneeling. If you're 
think of the, the wafer which symbolizes the broken body of Jesus. Take and eat with thanksgiving. Now partake of the cup which symbolizes the shed blood of Jesus. Take and drink with thanksgiving. The love you've shown by your coming, that you intend to renew your covenant with God, you may rise and go in peace. And may God's peace be with you. And as you retire, others will indeed come.
day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen my sisters and brothers you've shown by your coming and your service that you intend to renew your covenant with god you may rise and go in peace and may the lord's peace be with you let me ask you to stand all over the sanctuary. Why don't you shake somebody's hand and tell them you love them in the Lord? In the Lord. God loves you too.
Christ in the day. Go knowing that there is power in prayer. Find a place of prayer, a pattern for prayer, and persistence in prayer. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide. Now, henceforth and forevermore, let us sing together. Tremendous week. We love you. Thank you for coming. We appreciate it.